Comes away in the end, however, by Shane Kavanagh, gets it out here, taken by Waterford's Shane O'Sullivan, two men after him, trying to steal a march, but it's Shane Kavanagh once again, avoiding the hook. Under it well, there was Kevin Moran, but it runs away from him, on towards Silver Donnellan, angling it across here, in there towards Joe Kavanagh, breaks out as far as Michael Brick Walsh, and the Waterford defenders doing well. Had a dreadful day two weeks ago, they're having a great day here so far. But there's a lot of time still to go as Shane Cavanaugh launches another goalway attack. Batted down by Earl Tanyan. Coming onto it there, the substitute Cyril Donlan, and he's put it to the right, and he's missed the chance. It's uh, Galway second wide of the second half, and they're ninth in all. They're seven points behind. Did they come into this match thinking it was just a case of going through the motions? They haven't been able to bring themselves up to that level of intensity that they showed against Cork once they got going in that match in Limerick a couple of weeks ago. Waterford have had a lot to prove to themselves as much as anything else. And John Milan once again is in match-proving mood. He's got a second point. The day shower ahead by eight points. There are only 14 minutes gone in the second half. Who's going to win it? Back come Galway, but defended well there. And Michael Brick was what a match he's playing. Is there a better centre half back in the game right now? There are some good ones, but he's a terrific ones. player. He's playing great stuff, Kevin Moore and himself, Tony Brown, the same as the last day, but up front, I think the difference today is Shane Walsh, John Milan, much more involved in the game. Kevin Hines gets it forward for Galway, but it's out over the sideline. It's a line ball to Waterford. And to be fair to Waterford, Jerry, I think the most admirable thing is the way they've come back psychologically and put in this performance. But really, Galway have been so poor, um, you know, they've made it very easy for them. That, you know, Waterford really, I'd say, can't believe themselves. Being downtown before the game, talking to all the Waterford people who are normally so upbeat coming to a match, they were sort of saying you know, they couldn't see, could they, you know, could this performance be there today? They didn't expect anything out of the team. And Galway really have handled them at the initiative from, from the very start. This is hit inside here, but it's won back again by Waterford. Taken by Michael Brick Walsh. Having a field day, literally. Look, it opens up for him because there were some decoy runs made right and left. And Galway bought the dummies, as it were. John Mullan, back once again it comes. Fired in dangerously towards Kelly, trying to break it down to himself. Down he goes, and it's a free in. It's amazing, but Waterford have only conceded five frees in this match so far. By comparison, the pressure's been on that Galway defence. Yeah, that's a bad tackle there by Fergal Moore. He made absolutely no attempt uh, to go for the ball. And Certainly, not, uh, Owen Kelly's yellow, been in the wars. Well, he has been, but it, like, that's a definite yellow card. And um, I don't know if Fergal Moore has been booked up to know. I don't think so. so no, he wasn't. Yeah. So a free in here for Porik Mahoney. And Michael, based upon your logic earlier on, because he's taken it and not Owen Kelly, if Kelly's in the f I will. full of his health, what yeah. do you think? All over the bar, when you're eight points up, you make it nine. You just... You've been talking how well Waterford have done. Galway seem to hate the tag of favouritism, not just this year, but most years. Here comes Porik Mahoney, and that's another seven points for Porik Mahoney from Freeze. Also terribly vital as it's 117 to 18. It's gotta be another sub in a moment here. We'll see Barry Daly coming on. Right now we're watching David Burke for Galway. I think they're gonna empty the bench fairly soon in a desperate attempt to get back into the match in a meaningful way. Crisis point for Galway. Tony Brown. And De Brown got a knock and he's gone down. Oh. Referee allows play to continue. And that is hit wide. And he was definitely chopped down on there, in my opinion, by Earl Italian And Let's have a look at it again, Michael. Here you are. Don't really see it all that terribly clearly from that camera angle there, but he did go down in a heap immediately. Well, he's not one for going down, no. either in fairness, but it like, didn't look to be a lot in it, in fairness, Earl Italian. He might have just caught him with a... So have to have another look at it. Barry Daly comes on, player going off is Andy Smith. So from the starting 15, Andy Smith is gone, Joe Gantley is gone. We've uh, also seen, who else went? 
Adrian Cullen went off with an injury. Now just a little bit of a nudge there, but he must have hit yeah. him. Well, he did go down, stressing the pain. Don't forget, of course, later on this evening on this programme, the GAA All-Ireland Football quarter-final draw. And this is where you've got the winners of the four provinces in the hat, as it were, and they will be drawn just after six o'clock tonight. Not to be missed. I think to be fair to Tony there, I'd say maybe he went down looking for the free and didn't get it, so he had to stay down for a little while. It doesn't look to be too bad. 18 minutes into the second half, or uh, in the 53rd minute, as you can see, 117 to 18. Galway very disappointing so far. Waterford atoning for that dreadful performance in Cork, and Kevin Moran once again giving leadership, but this time miscuing his shot. Just to the right of the target, that one went. But look at the intensity on his face. Got up there ahead of the substitute, Barry Daly, took it down well. James Skehill. Goal were trying to win their own puck out and do something with it. They can't even do that. Joe Canning beaten for it easily. On came Michael Brick Welch. Cleverly holding the possession. Porik Mahoney into space. That wasn't such clever use, however, and it gives the ball away to uh, Galway here. And there's a chance now for Shane Cavanagh to drive it as far as possible. And you know, the big question coming into this match was the, the situation in the Waterford full back line. The full back position has been something of a nightmare for them for ages, but we've seen Liam Lawler under very little pressure. Okay, he conceded a penalty and they scored a goal from it, but they haven't really been tested. The ball hasn't got in there. The ball hasn't got injured. That's the point. You can't test them without hitting the ball in. And Galway haven't won any possession around the half forward line, middle of the field. Um, her Waterford have completely dominated the game. The scoring chances are interesting, Michael. Waterford have created 35 against only 20 for uh, Galway so far. Waterford much more productive. Leading the match, Malumphy in the thick of it, helped out here by Porik Mahoney, looking to get the latitude to strike. Well, they're missing the chances, but they're still showing us tremendous resolve and energy. And if they took a few more, even 50% of those chances they're creating, look at this for a puck out, it's dreadful. Straight to Shane O'Sullivan and straight over the bar. This is turning into be an absolute nightmare for Galway. The raging hot favourites coming into the quarter final and Waterford are giving them a lesson. That was a shocking puck out. Nobody challenging for it. Straight to Shane O'Sullivan. Thank you very much indeed. And it's won here by Kevin Moran. This is some performance by the Dacia. Porik Mahoney. On as far as John Milan. Where is Galway's spirit? Where's their leadership? It needs to be summoned quickly. Malumphy striking again. He's put it wide, but they're just firing. It's like target practice. Yeah, but... You know, Jerry, it's a long time since I think I've seen a, a team giving up as easily as Galway have here. They're making absolutely no effort. Waterford are winning every single puck out. Uh, they're dominating the game every, in every position almost. And it really, it's, you know, it's not good enough at championship level to see a team just uh, making no effort. 23, Aidan Hart will be coming on in just a moment. And he's their last sub. And that has gone over the bar. And Joe Canning, the one who led the way for them there, his fourth point to go with the penalty goal he got earlier. Again, he got sufficient space. Yeah, in fairness to Joe, you know, he was full forward since the start of the second half. Not one ball was um, made its way into him and he'd come back out and that's a good point by Joe and he scored a couple of good points in the first half. But outside of that, there's no other threat up there. Well, there's a, a nine-point deficit and Galway have now got a set about trying to eat into that. They've given Waterford some advantage. That's played back out smartly by Liam Lawler. Back out to the middle, only as far as Barry Daly. Galway needing for scores. Can Daly provide one of them? And I think there was plenty of courage, encouragement there from the Waterford players to the umpires to wave it wide, but I think it was wide anyway. 118 to 19. Not a score line you would have anticipated with nearly 57 minutes gone on the clock. Under this one, Shane Kavanagh, that's much better. Now, can they start playing from here on in? They've emptied their bench. Five subs, I think, have been all introduced. Has, I think Aiden Hart has been introduced. Or, no, not yet. But he will be in in a minute. And it's going to be a free in. And Waterford now need to keep their composure. They're in a very good situation. Liam Lawler's got to be spoken to. No talk, says the referee. Let me do the writing. And uh, a yellow card will be issued 
to the 26-year-old who plays for Four Mile Water in Waterford. We all, we all know Jarrah Hurling can, can turn quickly, you know, if they get a point here back to eight, if they could get a goal, you know, they can get themselves back into it, but really, you know, if Waterford just produce the goods for another three or four minutes, get another score or two, the game is over. Only two points scored by Galway in the second half. They've both been scored by this man here, Joe Canning. And I think he's been told, have a go for a goal, maybe. It's a fair distance out. Oh, he's had a goal, it took a deflection, it's gone for a 65, and that's the first. I think it went off Liam Lawler's stick. And it's like Joe Canning taking on the Waterford hurling team right now. It was, yeah, Lawler who touched it. 65 the result. There's still 12 minutes left in this match. And Joe Canning, I'm fairly certain, will believe it's still possible. Looking for his fifth point of the match. Apart from the penalty, which was from a free, this is the next one to come from a, a free, which is an amazing statistic. It's down to Waterford's dominance, it's Waterford's discipline. They just didn't give away short in freeze or close in freeze today. And the Galway fans not giving up on it yet. Just listen to the decibel level rising and the Waterford fans just now encouraging their team to try and spur it up again and try and get over that winning, winning line. Seamus Prendergast did really well. Kicked it out here as far as Shane O'Sullivan. Davy Fitzgerald has yet to introduce a sub if he wishes to do so. Back on towards... Prendergast, he's missed a few chances, he's very careful with this one, he needed to be, and he's nursed it over the bar, and everyone in the Waterford forward line has now scored in this match, and that is a good response to that last point by Joe Canning coming from the 65, 119 to 110, it's a very comfortable margin for Waterford, you would think under normal circumstances against a Galway team who have been very, very poor, what can Barry Daly do? Needs to look up and pick out a colleague. Cyril Donlan, maybe. Or perhaps this man here. And it's Joe Canning racing through. And he goes down 25 metres out from the goal area. And Porrick Mahoney has been called across. And the referee's got to have a word with him for that. And he's definitely got to see a, a card. Joe Canning has been carrying the fight in the last few minutes. And the referee showing a yellow card to Porik Mahoney. He has, Jerry, he's looked very sharp since the start of the game. Anytime he's got on the ball, but I suppose the question is where do you play him? When